Hello and welcome back to your PA Mentor YouTube channel, the best place for all things PA, for all your pre-PA students, PA students, and new graduates. We've got you covered. We're gonna teach you everything they didn't teach you in PA school. And today's hot topic, resumes. Because I know you've spent hours perfecting that resume and it's a pretty damn good one. But why isn't anyone calling you back? Why aren't you getting interviews? Finding a new job right out of PA school is one of the biggest obstacles that new grads are facing right now. Having a great resume is gonna set you apart from everybody else. And to make yourself the most marketable candidate, I'm gonna give you some tips and strategies to make your resume stand out from the crowd. By the end of this video, you'll learn exactly what employers are looking for in your resume and how to get yours noticed. Before we get started, let's talk about what you're doing wrong in your resume. I've read so many resumes in the last few months and here are some of the common mistakes that I'm seeing. Ask yourself this, is your resume four pages long? Are you listing all of your clinical rotations and describing each one in detail? Do you really think the hiring manager really cares that you did 20 pap smears and five absence drainage in your ED rotation? Probably not. Reality flash, nobody cares, guys. Nobody cares. This is the biggest mistakes new grads make. Their resumes are always too long, too wordy, and completely unorganized. And it is just a hot mess. So let's fix this. Tip number one, keep your resume shorter than one to two pages. When a hiring manager is reviewing your resume, she should be able to review it within 45 seconds, maybe 60 max. She should be able to read everything there is to know about you within the first page, or at least the most important things about you within the first page. So keep it short and keep it sweet. I've seen new grads with resumes that are three to five pages long. And this blows my mind because as a practicing PA for eight years, my resume is still only two pages long. Why? Well, I haven't cured cancer and I really haven't published a ton of journal articles, so there's really no reason for me to have a long resume. Again, keep it short and keep it sweet. Clinical rotations do not count as work experience. They are a mandatory part of your curriculum to graduate PA school, and virtually every working PA has done the exact same rotations. Under the rotation part of your resume, list what rotation, where you did it, and maybe the time that it was completed. That is all you really need to write. Do not, and I repeat, do not list each and every single one of your rotation in detail unless it is relevant to the job that you're applying for. If you are applying for a job in surgery, then yes, go ahead and tell me about your electives in you know, cardiovascular surgery or neurosurgery, and if you have experience in robotic surgery. That is relevant and pregnant information. Do not list all the pap smears you've done, all the laceration repairs you've done, or how many well visits you've done. That is irrelevant information. I expect you to have those skill sets and be competent in each of those procedures as a new graduate. You should have learned those in clinical rotation. So don't tell me what I already know. Tell me about things that I don't know about you. The next tip is to highlight your work and life experiences. I've heard from so many new grads who say, well, I really don't have any clinical experience besides my rotation. That is simply not true. Before you enter PA school, you had to have some sort of direct patient care hours. Your experience as an MA or a nurse or an EMT are all relevant medical experiences. They tell you how to deal with difficult patients, how to work in a team environment, um, and how to show empathy and compassion to your patients. I always like to mention the fact that I used to be a dental assistant, a optometry tech, a pharmacy tech, and an ultrasound tech. Um, and this just makes me more well-rounded because I explored every field of medicine and I know a little bit about each profession. Um, so I always bring that up. I also like to talk about my life experiences. I mentioned the fact that I can speak two languages fluently, which is Chinese and English, and I understand Vietnamese really well. I also mentioned the fact that I worked with Big Brother Big Sister for three years as a mentorship program. If you start a small business on Etsy, brag about it because you're an entrepreneur. I once worked with a student that told me she worked as an MA for a derm clinic, but she also managed their social media account. She did all the Instagram posts and Facebook ads. She made cute little banners and flyers um, for their website, and she brought in a ton of new patients to that clinic. I think she was managing a lot of the Botox clinic as well. That's something that she should have put in her resume, but she didn't. She only told me this in passing. 
because she didn't think it was relevant information, but it is definitely very relevant because you're bringing money into a business. Medicine is a business and most new grads forget about that. So if you are able to use social media marketing to generate income for the practice, your employer will be very, very impressed with you. So if these are small things you want to think about, that's going to elevate your resume. Before I move on to the next tip, I want to remind you that Erin and I did an entire Instagram post about the do's and don'ts of resume writing. Check that out. My Instagram handle is your PA mentor. And we may or may not be working on a resume template just for you. So keep an eye out for that. This next tip is going to sound so silly, but I have to say it because I see this mistake made all the time. Your resume should be clean and easy to read. Make sure it's well organized. Use colors, Make use different fonts, um, bold those fonts, and use those little line breaks at each section to make it easier to read. I don't want to read a long and dry and boring resume all in one font. I don't want to read it in small little print either. So bold some of that stuff. You know, add a little personal touch. Um, I've seen somebody put a little tree, a little Peds logo, just make it a little creative that sets you apart from everybody else. As long as it's clean and it's short and it's simple, it's much easier for me to say, oh, that looks like a nice resume. Because remember, six seconds, that's my attention span, six seconds to spend on your resume. So how are you gonna capture my attention? Be creative. The next tip is pretty obvious. Make sure you add all your active and current licenses and certification on your resume, even if it's still pending. And don't forget to add your ACLS, your BLS, and your PAL certification, and your DOT if you have that. In the past, I've even put a expired sonography license on my resume because I want to highlight once again that I can read and interpret ultrasound, which is a very unique skill. And it's used in ER, urgent care, primary care, urology, nephrology. So it makes me a really, marketable candidate and I want to highlight anywhere possible even if they miss it on the first page. So make sure you do that. Make sure you highlight every single thing about you that is unique to you to make sure that you are getting the job. At this point, we reviewed all the important tips to help you elevate your resume and make you as competitive as can be. I hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you check us out on our podcast. We have some great information for all your new grads. So we'll see you next week and thank you again for being here.